Hi everyone, here is our math problem for today. Which do you think is larger? The number of ways to shuffle a deck of cards or the number of grains of sand on earth? You can pause the video and see if you can solve this math problem. Now let's solve this problem together. According to the science writer David Blattner in his book Spectrums, a group of researchers at the University of Hawaii tried to calculate the number of grains of sand. And this is what they found. If you assume a grain of sand has an average size and you calculate how many grains are in a teaspoon and then multiply by all the volume of the beaches and deserts in the world, the earth has roughly 7.5 times 10 to the 18 grains of sand. That is equivalent to 7 quintillion. 500 quadrillion of grains. That's a big number. That is approximately equal to 7.5 times 10 raised to the 18th. If you find the number of ways 52 cards can be rearranged uniquely, we are going to permute 52 objects taken 52 at a time. And that is equivalent to 52 times 51 times 50 until times 2 times 1. The reasoning behind is to get the first card, initially you have 52 cards to choose from. But once you chose the first card, there are only remaining 51 cards for the next place. And once these first two cards are already chosen, there are only 50 remaining cards that you can choose from for the third place. And continue the pattern so that for the last place, you only have one card to choose from. Another way of computing this permutation is to use this formula. The permutation of n objects permuted r at a time is equal to n factorial over the quantity n minus r factorial. So in this case, our n is 52, our r is 52. And so substituting now in the formula, we have 52 factorial over the quantity, 52 minus 52 factorial. And the denominator becomes 0 factorial, but by definition, 0 factorial is equal to 1. So we have 52 factorial over 1, or simply 52 factorial, which is expanded as 52 times 51 times 50, all the way up to 1. And what is the value of this long multiplication? Its value is this big number. Notice that there are all in all 68 digits in this number. And we can write this in scientific notation as approximately 8.0 times 10 raised to 67. So comparing now the two for the permutation of 52 cards taken 52 at a time, that is approximately 8 times 10 raised to 67, while the approximate number of grains of sand is approximately 7.5 times 10 raised to 18. And here is its expansion compared to this number number of digits at the left side. Notice that there are a lot of digits here compared to here. And that is unbelievable. And if you are not amazed at this time, let's look at one more example. Let's compare the permutation of 52 objects taken 52 at a time with the number of atoms in the world. So which one is larger? The number of ways to shuffle a deck of cards or the number of atoms in our world? Well, here is the result. Hey Alexa, how many atoms are there on Earth? There are approximately 1.33 times 10 to the 50th power number of atoms on the Earth. Or in other words, 133 trillion 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 atoms. So the estimated number of atoms is 1.3 times 10 raised to 50 or 133 trillion 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 atoms. I will put in the description the link on how scientists came up with this approximation. So comparing now the two, for the permutations of 52 cards taken 52 at a time, we have approximately 8 times 10 raised to 67. And for the number of atoms in the world, we have approximately 1.3 times 10 raised to 50. And obviously, the number at the left side is bigger than the number at the right side. When I learned about this, I cannot believe that there are more ways you can rearrange a deck of cards compared to the number of atoms in the world. This is really unbelievable. So the next time you shuffle a deck of card, you know that you are making history because chances are the results that you get cannot be replicated for a longer period of time. And also the results that you get may not be a replication of all the shuffling of playing cards in the past. And this is mind boggling. So thank you very much. And we hope to see you again here in our series, Unbelievable Mathematics.